Welcome to In His Presence TV broadcast where all things are possible. I'm David. I'm David Harabidi and my wife Joanna normally joins us on the broadcast. We're going to have a song from her to set the atmosphere for worship here uh, before too long. But I want to introduce you today to a special, special guest who's been ministering over in the Philippines with his wife. Uh, they have been on the mission field and impacting the world with the love of God. And you're going to be fascinated by his story because he comes out of gang violence from age 13, kind of an orphan type atmosphere, looking for a mentor, a father type figure. And of course, I'm going to let him share his story. But his name is Tommy Manai. So I want to introduce Tommy today. Tommy. Good to meet you, you so on much. the set here. And uh, just go ahead and uh, say hello. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have a great broadcast today, but I want to start out, and I just want to ask you a couple of questions, and then we're going to go into some other things. Yeah, sure. But, Tommy, at 13, would you share with us how you ended up from 13 in a gang in Los Angeles yeah. to selling drugs and on the streets and all the things that go along with that? And then you ended up, you know, radically changed mm. and changed in such a way that now you're out sharing God's love in what would even be an equally or more dangerous situation mm -hmm. than gang violence in L.A., yeah. which would be on the front lines in the rural areas in yeah. the Philippines where literally people, you know, can kill you for your faith. Mm. And you're there with your wife, Claudia, and your daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so please tell me more, tell them more about how that genesis occurred from, you know, growing up and then coming into gang and then coming out and now going out to reach really other gangs for Jesus. Yeah, it was um, the story that God gave me was um, growing up, I've always wanted to have a, a dad figure and my dad was there, but he was always working and there was things that he was doing inside of his life. So I sought it in other places. And so the first place that I went was school, and I would, you know, have a 4.0 GPA. I would love working with my teachers and asking them questions, um, but they didn't teach me holistic lifestyle. And so that's when I met a very um, aggressive gang leader who really was seeking out to raise up other gang members in his gang. And uh, that's when he found me, and I was just a really small um, drug dealer. But the biggest thing was that I found someone that wanted to teach me things. And so he taught me. Um, everything from ironing my clothes um, in a gang to um, how to sell drugs and how to talk to women and how to fight and how to, you know, not get killed in the streets and things like that. And so for me, the gang was more like a family that I was searching for. Um, but God put a seed inside of me where I always wanted to know my blood family. And so that's when my mom, she would pray over and over so much that she would wring her uh, towel and uh, tears would come out of it. And then she would just intercede more and more and that's when I felt like I want to go to the Philippines and meet my family, actually. So then I go over there and, you know, I get kicked out of high school again. My parents um, leave me there and tell me I can't come back home and, uh, until I graduate college or my life has changed. And I'm, at this point, I'm like 17, so I'm not looking at those things. But I had one powerful night with God where I just looked up to the stars and I had weed, I had drugs, and I had a beer in my hand and a cigarette, and I just didn't, everything was just numb. And I just looked up to God in the sky, and I asked him in the stars, if you really exist, I want you to show me, because I have no idea how love even looks anymore. And so that night, I went to sleep, and I heard all of the prayers of my mom and my grandma. And I woke up uh, in tears. My whole pillow was soaked. And I wrote a letter to God um, asking for forgiveness uh, for all of the pain that I've gone through and all of the hate that I've had and all this anger and revenge. And uh, within a few weeks, I met a missionary, a rapping missionary, who was a drug dealer from Oakland. And he became a missionary in the Philippines. And he starts rapping his testimony in the clubs about um, dodging bullets and selling cocaine. And, uh, but he's saved now, and he found what he was looking for. He found his father in heaven. And that's when I was like, I went up to him and I said, I want to do what you're doing. Can I, wh what can I do to follow you? And he said, I'll pick you up at 7 AM. He brought me to a slum in the Philippines and put a sledgehammer in my hand and said, just break down all the houses. And so I did it, and I found out that we were breaking down the houses of some of the most uh, people in need the most in the actual slum. And they were um, anything from drug dealers to um, addicts, 
uh, people that go in and out of jail from prostitution, um, but we were helping them by sharing the love of God. And there was all these kids that started running after me. Um, and I was like, I looked at them and I said, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, my life, I just, I look up to killers, I look up to drug dealers, I want to become like them and dropped out of school. I have nothing. I don't know why these kids love me so much. And when they jumped all over me, I looked inside their eyes and I said, this is, this is God. This is Jesus. This is who I've been looking for. And God reminded me when I was a little kid, I always wanted to have a dad. And then that's when, um, that's when I gave my life to the Lord. And um, from that point on, he told me, I'm going to teach you everything that you want to learn about what it means to be a man of God. And now it's, uh, I'm 32 and I have a family. And he's, he's really answered that. And he's, he's been faithful in everything that he said he's going to do. And um, that's why I've, I've given my life to sharing the Father's love, because that's what I always wanted in my life. And I, I firmly believe so many other people in the world want that as well. So I, I, I make my life as much as I can to reflect the Father's heart, to reflect his love, to reflect his power um, just by serving him and being humble. And I see God work in signs and wonders everywhere. I see thousands of people give their lives to Christ. I see churches planted all across the world and simply just because the Father in heaven loves them. And I, I'll do it for the rest of my life. I can't imagine doing anything else. That is so exciting. Yeah. I mean, how God took you from the, utter, the guttermost and has sent you to reach the uttermost parts of the mm. earth. And what's fascinating to me is you heard the prayers of your mother and grandmother. The Lord allowed you to tap in mm. and to hear what was recorded in heaven. Yeah. In Malachi chapter uh, 3, it talks about, and they prayed before the Lord, and this Bible says that the Lord heard them and wrote it in his book. And God takes the prayers of mothers mm. and fathers for their prodigal children, and he hears them, and he writes them in his book, and he begins to answer them. Yeah. And uh, I want to put up some pictures mm. of you in ministry. I just want to start with that one little video clip of you just, you know, kind of goes maybe there. Yeah, that, yeah, so maybe the video clip, uh, we can just play that one real quick. And it gives us an idea of justice uh, has a name, mm. but you have an audio CD out yeah. as well. So maybe we can play that clip, that first one. exciting. I, I just want to share with you a little bit uh, about Tommy and his wife. Your, your wife is Colombian. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, hola de uh, Colombia, de Suramérica. Mm -hmm. Que Dios lo bendiga, hermanos y hermanas. For the Colombians, we, we love our Colombian Hispanic audiences. Uh, but the Menes, uh, Tommy and Claudia, they're on the leadership team of Youth with a Mission in the Philippines, the Impact Division, uh, Youth with a Mission, also known as YWAM. They've been around for years. It's the largest missions organization on earth. And YWAM has trained over 5 million missionaries since 1956. YWAMers currently work in every country and have over 2,000 individual unique operating locations. There's over 28,000 YWAM missionaries serving in the world today. Their vision is to take part in finishing the Great Commission. Since Tommy and his wife Claudia met, they've been married about three and a half years, mm -hmm. uh, they've helped coordinate the body of God to reach over a half a million people. Their impact includes, but is not limited to, the unengaged regions of Nepal and India and unreached Muslim tribes from southern Philippines as well as Africa, Korea, Thailand, and even the United States of America. They have a heart for the practical love of God to be revealed through medical, education, economics, government, family, and more. Tommy and Claudia are currently being mentored by Mark Anderson, the founder of Impact World, an evangelist arm of YWAM, Youth with a Mission, that uses arts and entertainment to reach millions and call to all, a movement of over 40,000 global leaders focused on finishing the Great Commission. These partnerships include Wycliffe, Campus Crusade for Christ, the Joshua Project, International Missions Board, Back to Jerusalem Movement, 
and more. And so, uh, you know, this is not a, a small vision that the Lord has given to YWAM, called all, and you and your wife out reaching people in the very difficult areas. I mean, I just want you to share with the people uh, briefly some of the, you know, demographics that God is sending you to to release his love, the love of the Father. Yeah, a lot of the work that we do is in South Asia. So as we know, um, South Asia, or actually Asia in general, seven out of ten countries persecute Christians. And um, Re Repeat that. I think that's important. Yeah, in Asia, seven out of ten countries persecute Christians. So they're not just not not Christian nation, they persecute. Yes. They're not just like neutral or, well, we're this and, you know, you're that. They persecute to yes, the point yes. to where they, they murder them. Yes. You know, there was 160, I think 8,000 people were martyred. They were killed for the name of Christ because they're Christians. In, in certain nations, it's illegal to share Jesus. I mean, you might be tapping into satellite right now and it's illegal in your nation. Hmm. And, uh, you know, by, by television, we're able to share God's love with you but it's different when somebody's on the front lines in there. I mean, you can, you can shoot an arrow at your TV set, and I don't know about it, but if I'm on the platform sharing like God's love with you, I get hit with the arrow. It's a different game, and you're mm -hmm. on the front lines taking you know, the armor of God with you, yes. the whole armor, the spiritual armor, the angelic host, mm -hmm. and releasing God's love and God's protecting you. Share, share a little more, if you would. Yeah, I think coming from an American nation where women are empowered, they have a destiny, children are looked at as the emerging generation, um, going into a lot of these countries where they persecute Christian values and destiny and just even the church, it really gave me a strong sense of how much Jesus actually really loves them and that he would send even his son to the world that, you know, essentially persecuted him and rejected him. So I believe one of the greatest things that I get to be able to do is actually understand God's genuine love and how much he had to pick up his cross and absolutely give up everything, his comfort, the third heaven, even his um, coming down here in human form as God and sharing his mercy with people, just being able to do that um, in my life and where I've come from, that's probably the biggest blessing is just experiencing his love for other people and being able to do that in signs of wonders and also in a very practical way. That's great. Uh, I want you to share uh, just briefly one of the most impactive miracles, because you see the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, um, people come out of witchcraft and, and Satanism. Yeah. On, the, on the front lines, you know, it's, it's common yeah. to see God show up in the miraculous. Share, and this is impromptu, uh, mm -hmm. share one of the most impactive miracles that you've seen. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting because we see all kinds of things like blind eyes get open and um, people standing up after their legs have been crippled. Um, and I, I love those. I, I can't, I, I, we see them all the time in the hundreds and thousands. And, but there's something that always touches my heart. And I just, even right now, I can't understand supernatural way it happens. But I have such a, a passion to see women and children uh, step fully into their destiny. And one thing that's uh, really hurt me is that when I go to a lot of these nations, uh, women have no rights. It's not about voting. It's just they have to stay at home. They can't, they can't show themselves. They, they can't speak. Um, even in a lot of the churches we go to, they're separated from men and women. And it hurts me because I have my wife, and she's uh, very apostolic. She's a leader. Uh, God's put a calling on her life, and it, it makes me see that, um, you know, half of the planet are women. And so uh, two-thirds of them are in this area that I'm working in. And to know that this many women have not stepped into their destiny actually uh, pains me. And so I, I think one of the greatest uh, miracles that I've even seen is, is seeing a woman come from these persecuted nations who has been completely covered up, has no voice, has no authority, and then when the gospel pierces their heart, they realize Adam and Eve, they realize that Eve also had a destiny in changing the whole world. And for her to look at her family and raise up her kids and their destiny, for her to look at herself and, and say, wow, God's actually put the Holy Spirit inside of me. Um, that's something when I see um, these women just even take off veils and step into the church and open up their Bible and start reading more and more and you see them blossom into the power that God and beauty that God's given them. Uh, to me, that always brings tears into my heart every single time that I see it. And so um, I, that's one of the things that even after our last outreach, I saw um, one of these women do that, and she, she took off her veil. She came in to the altar call. Um, she brought her husband, actually. Um, they gave their lives to the Lord, and she's going to the church now. And that stuff makes me just want to keep doing day in and day out everything that, that we're giving up so that 
they know that they have a destiny in Christ. Oh, those are great, great testimonies. You know, often when I ask people about, you know, to share the craziest miracle or the one that's touched their lives the most, they'll talk about, you know, the blind, the, the lame, you know, the, the great miracles that God does. But invariably, it's something about a little thing where it just shows and demonstrates God's love. And uh, yes. that, that really touches me. So do you work with any of the orphanages? You guys do medical yes. equipment? Share some more about that. Yeah, so when we come in, um, we believe that the Great Commission of Making Disciples of All Nations is, is going to impact the spheres. So the marketplace, the economy, people are going to get jobs, they're going to have medical, their education is going to increase. So that's also one of the ways that we really see the love of God really pierce hearts too. So even when we go to different parts of South Asia, we bring uh, medical kits because... Um, basic snake bites are um, killing people and the nearest hospital is 14 hours away um, in some of these places hygiene is just one of the greatest killers of families so we bring in soap just very we even have to teach them how to use the soap um, because even culturally they've never seen it and um, even in the philippines um, because there's so many um, children just running around the street um, what we see is we take them in we bring them to a community bring them into a church uh, help them get back into school and then we actually see them turn into evangelists and uh, these kids and disciples of Jesus transform their own community. So we like seeing um, the holistic approach of God impacting them with powerful signs that only he can do, and then also bringing them fully into their destiny with their profession, their skill, and seeing that practically work out in their family and their community as well. Wow. So if I had to ask a question such as how can people participate with prayer with uh you know encouragement support what would that be to help release and further this love that you've experienced with others what what would that look like i know you've got the manize.com which is your website mm -hmm. the manize.com which is your name the manize m-a-n-a-y-s.com the manize and you're also connected with Youth With a Mission. You're connected with Call to All. What would be something, if a viewer felt the tug on their heart right now, what would that be? Well, one of the greatest needs in the Great Commission is actually uh, just missionaries, whether in, they're in the marketplace or they're full-time with some type of missions organization and they want a church plant. And so one of them is just uh, if you felt the tug inside of your heart to actually go to a location, or you could even be go to your community and go to your neighbor even, um, that would be probably the first one. The first one is simply the lifestyle of giving God's love in the places where it's not. So going where it's not. And then the second one is 1% um, of a majority of the donations in the world go to people that have never, go to um, the people that have never heard the gospel. So 99% uh, usually go to reach nations. But that 1% of money, actually, that's all that the unreached nations of the world have received. So even uh, financially sowing into the kingdom in places where the gospel is not present, the Bible is not even translated, um, that's a very key piece um, in us finishing the Great Commission. So they could, they could do that at uh, themanize.com. Yes. They could also. I want to roll to a clip right now on Call to All. It's uh, about a minute and 30 seconds, uh, and we're going to go on there, and it'll show you what's going on with the five finish lines, and it's really well articulated. So we're going to roll to that clip. Before Jesus left the earth, he gave us very specific assignments. We like to call these finish lines. But these are things that we're meant to finish as the church. He said in Mark 16, tell everybody who I am. Well, we need to know how many people there are, where they are. Matthew 28 gives us several finish lines. We need to disciple everyone in the world. Every nation, every people group has to be discipled. Well, we know then we have to know how many people groups there are, where they are, what language they speak. We have to have the Bible, so it has to be translated into those languages. We have to engage them with the scriptures, or it doesn't do any good. What if they don't read? We have to have an oral presentation. We know in Matthew 25 that when we stand before the Lord, he's going to ask us about the areas of compassion and justice. Every one of us are going to have to answer that. 
And it's implied that we need to have a church presence or a place where people can gather as believers. These are all finish lines. These are the things he gave us to do. It doesn't matter what we're involved with, what our career track is, we're students in school, whatever it is. All of us are going to have to give a response back to the Lord of what we did in these things that he entrusted to us. So let's finish. Let's quantify, measure these things, and let's go do it together. Wow, that's a great video. So they can go to calltoall.org, yes. C-A-L-L, the number two, all.org. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we play these on radio too, so I like to give the, uh, the verbal so they can pull them up. Mm -hmm. But uh, you'll learn more. And how many unreached people groups are there left? So there's um, 16,000 about total people groups in the world, and around 7,000 of them uh, have not uh, been reached. And so that means 2% of their population um, less than 2% of their population are followers of Jesus. So that makes up about 40% of the entire world. Re please repeat that, because I, I want them to hear these statistics again about... Please yes. repeat that. It's, 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 it's crazy. I mean, the numbers... You're talking about 7 billion people on the planet have the percentages that have never had an opportunity mm. to hear mm -hmm. about the goodness of God. Go ahead. Yeah, that's... Um, so again, it's uh, 16,000... Uh, people plus groups. people groups in the world, and 7,000 of them have, uh, they don't have a church presence, a lot of them have no Bible, they don't even have a missionary, a lot of them don't even have churches targeting them, and so that makes up 40% of the planet, which is around 3 billion people. So when you say there's no churches that are even really targeting them, when you say target, you mean target with the love of yeah. God. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, it's interesting that God's love cannot wait to reach yes. the least of these. Mm -hmm. And God reached you, not in America, mm -hmm. yeah. but you were in a gang life in America, mm -hmm. drug dealing from age 13 to 17, and you were making 4.0 grade averages, but that didn't satisfy. You wanted community, you wanted mentorship, you wanted fatherhood. Mm -hmm. It was absent in your life. That vacuum created that opening for gang activity, and then you were willing to do anything to be pleasing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, then what happened was you got swept away in that lifestyle, and you got delivered in another nation mm -hmm. from an American missionary, and you were American from the Philippines, but yeah. you grew up in America, and you got swept back into God's love mm -hmm. in response to your mother's prayer who cried into that towel. Yeah, definitely. And so when people facilitate, they support, they go as missionaries, they're helping change lives, yeah. one soul at a time. Mm -hmm. Tommy, it has been a pleasure having you on the program. We're going to have you on part two next week. So and much. so we're going to learn more about your music, Justice Has a Name, your, your CD, and how even as you were caught by a rapper yes. from America, mm -hmm. you also have been given a rap. People ask me, well, David, is, is rap, you know, biblical? And I say, well, you know, here's the thing. It's not the music that makes it gospel. It's the message. Yes. And the message is good news. We're going to finish up here with a, uh, a song from my wife as she sings Out of the Wilderness, Joanna Herobedian. And then we're going to go ahead and close out. But as we head that direction, I want you to pray into that camera for those that are lost. Lord, we just uh, thank you that every single person here watching, Lord, you have a plan for, you have a destiny. And God, in the same way that you came to me and you encountered me, God, with your love, Lord, I just pray over every single individual here that you would encounter them with their love, that they would see signs and wonders happen in their family and in their own personal life, and they would see the true plan that you have for them and the fullness, and they'd be able to walk that out. So I just pray that over every single individual and that they would experience you personally at that level in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as we go to this clip of my wife singing out of the wilderness, God is calling children all over the world out of the wilderness. I am calling my children out of the wilderness. I am calling my people back to come home. I am calling my children out of 
wilderness I am calling my people back to come home won't you hear my voice I'm calling your name just follow me I'll show the way for I love you I love you I died I bled for you so that you could live and see my peace. I am calling my children out of the wilderness. I am calling my people back to come home. I'm the Lord your God. I'm reaching for you. I have heard your tears hit the ground and your cries. They come up to heaven. And I'm telling you, my child, I am his here. I am calling my children out of your wilderness. I'm calling my people back to come. Well, that closes out our broadcast. I'm David, Virtual Church Media. You're watching In His Presence TV broadcast where all things are possible. And our guest today has been Tommy Manet, he and his wife Claudia in the Philippines, themanets.com. God bless you. We'll see you next week. All things are possible with God for you.